Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Excuse me, but I am just reacquainting myself with um, some honeycomb. Now this is the best honeycomb in the world. It's covered in some brown stuff. This stuff is chocolate. Now this honeycomb I'm in love with. But I'm afraid this honeycomb here I'm 99% divorced from. Now if you've been watching my series you'll appreciate just how much I do dislike this stuff. Remember I said I'm 99% divorced. I do keep an occasional acquaintance with this stuff for the sake of the kids. It has a very 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 small usage but in general it's the worst thing you could ever put on one of these machines. I'm sorry if I'm going off on a bit of a rant and I'm not carrying on with my lenses as we promised you last time. Don't worry, I'm doing a lot of work in the background that is of no interest to you at all in terms of video. Um, you're more interested in the results and the data that I'm going to come up with and that will be in probably the next session or so. But for today it's most important that I talk about this horrible stuff. Please don't lose patience because I've got something very interesting to show you a little later on. Now this stuff looks as though it should be so amazingly good for use in this machine. But in reality it's bad in so many ways and it's also particularly dangerous. The thing that you've heard me mention many times is about airflow management through your machine. Now this particular machine has got some sort of concession to airflow management through the machine in that he's got some grills across the front here. Those grills are not particularly large when you relate it to the suction that I've got coming out of my Purex extraction unit. Now to solve that problem I've got a couple of stops in the corner here which give me about a 25 millimeter gap across the bottom of my door when I close it. So I've got a nice stream of air being pulled into the machine. <clears throat> now once that air gets into the machine, practical experience has told me we need to get it across the work surface as quickly as possible and out the back of the machine on those grills. So we've got something what I would class as a cross flow of air. Now what does this stuff do? Well we've got our extraction underneath here in this cupboard underneath the machine and it's busy sucking out from the back of the machine. You would think that this would be great at pulling air downwards and taking it away from your work. Let me give you a demonstration. So we'll just turn on the extraction unit. Now I've got the door completely open. So what we should be able to see is how efficient this is at extracting air from underneath this job as we want it to. see several things. Now can you see the fumes hanging in those pockets there? Now we can see that because this is nice clear acrylic. You wouldn't normally see that if it was MDF or anything else. I'm sure you'll be able to see that around the edge of here we've got all sorts of strange marks. Well that's where you're getting reflections off of the honeycomb itself. Condensate is exactly what it sounds like. If you breathe on a window you get condensate because your warm breath condenses on the cold surface and that's what's happening inside here. We're getting acrylic condensate settling inside here. And if we cut wood, we get all this horrible brown condensate sitting inside here. So we have two problems. Number one, we've got condensate which is busy clagging up the honeycomb. And secondly, we've got these marks on the underneath of the job, as you can clearly see. When you look at this logically, it makes perfect sense that this is really no good at extracting the air from underneath your job. The kerf is only something in the region of about 0.1 thick. 
So we're not exactly driving a great deal of air through the curve. So all this lovely air we're busy sucking through the machine, where is it going? When we've got the door closed, it's coming in here and it's immediately being finding the quickest and easiest way it can out of the machine, which is through there and out the back of the machine. It's going nowhere near our job. So there is very little in the way of suction here because we've only got a very, very, very narrow 0.1, maybe 0.15 cut line. So we're not going to get a lot of air sucking through that cut line. OK, let's temporarily improve the situation, should we? By blocking off as much of the table as we can. So we're forcing all our airflow now down through the job. In fact, if anything, it's worse. Look, we get more condensate. And then in addition to that, I don't know whether you can see that from time to time, you get an orange glow. There's some burning taking place in these cells. Now, I'm very fortunate with this machine in that this is not a permanent fixture. I have the opportunity to get a quickie divorce and I can put some stability back into my life with this sheet of steel which completely covers the table except for a small gap around the edge which we're not really going to worry about that odd five percent but what that does that forces the air now through the front of this machine and it's going straight across that plate and out the back there. I've got some 10 millimeter thick acrylic blocks. We'll place our work on those blocks. Okay, now we're looking through the gap in the door at the plate and the gap underneath the plate. You can just see the black nozzle there. And I hope you can now see the way in which the air is dragging away all those fumes underneath. They're not getting a chance to settle and condense, they're just being ripped away. through me honeycomb by the way and this time we're going to cut it flat on the metal surface and I'm sure you can see all that vapor settling down on my metal surface there it's condensing as I told you it would do Catch that in the light. It's got all the horrible acrylic condensate stuck to the bottom of the job. Ah, smells horrible. You'll see that there's probably a little pool of acrylic condensate there. Yep, that smells exactly like it looks. Horrible and sticky. Now, I want to demonstrate something to you with my blow lamp here. So once acrylic is warm, it takes very little for it to ignite. It starts producing its own vapour, which catches fire. Now the reason I'm showing you all of this, as you see here, I've got this sticky vapour which is now condensed, and every time you cut acrylic, those fumes will start sticking to the inside of these honeycomb cells. Now whenever you cut acrylic 
or any material, there will always be excess energy which passes through the cut. And if we look carefully at my table here, my steel table, where I had the acrylic sitting right on top of the table, look, there's the excess energy that's actually gone in there and actually marked my steel. So the point I'm making is there is energy available underneath your work to ignite the acrylic buildup that occurs inside your honeycomb table. I brought you outside my workshop here because it's A, it's a lovely day, um, and B, I thought you'd like to see my new acquisition. Yeah, I know it matches my Chinese garden chairs, but it must be something to do with the standard colour in China. Um, this is something that was given to me, would you believe? About a year ago, I helped a guy install this machine into his factory. I gave him a few quick lessons and off he went. And a year later he's decided to upgrade his machine. And he's gifted this to me. How lucky can a guy be? Well, let me give you a quick tour of my new acquisition. I'm sure you'll be very impressed. A little bit of damage to the paintwork, but hey, nothing that a little bit of um, little bit of work can't fix. And yeah, I think the door struts need a little bit of attention as well. Now, I think you can see here the remains of the job that he was doing. It was a piece of acrylic. <laughs> My goodness me. He's been cutting nothing but acrylic on this machine since day one. <clears throat> now, even though it looks as though he's been using these little spacers here to space the job off of this honeycomb, he still managed to catch fire to it inside these honeycombs by the look of it. I mean, most of the acrylic has burned off of here now <laughs> because it's been so hot inside this machine. Look what it's done to these rails, look. And it's just these stainless steel cords that are remaining of the belt. I did think I might try and rebuild this machine, but the more I look at it, I think anybody in their right mind would say, forget it. Now, we have got a half decent EFR laser tube at the back here, but I suspect that looking at the way in which this has been heated, it's probably not going to be much good for anything either. Here's the display panel. And here we've got a few other little things to remind us that there was a lot of heat taking place in this machine. Now let me make one further observation. You can see that the head is actually parked over at the back corner there. So the cycle had finished before the fire really took hold, showing you that there was something happening in this area here slowly building up. Now the main reason why I'm showing you this is to illustrate the dangers of fire and acrylic and honeycomb. Those three things go together. How do I know that? Well this is about the sixth machine that I've seen in three years. Now undoubtedly there's many more around the world but those are the ones that people have said to me, hey Russ, <coughs> I've been an absolute idiot. I've walked away from my machine and here's the result. Fortunately, it was insured and I got it replaced under my insurance. I don't know whether this was an insurance write-off or not, but that's beside the point. The danger is there whether your machine is insured or not. So just take this as a cautionary tale and Look carefully at 
how you use your honeycomb. Don't ever walk away from your machine. In this particular instance, it was a production machine, as you can see. The guy is not going to stand here and watch all of these pieces being cut. Words fail me. <laughs> right, until the next session, I just remind you of two things. One, don't walk away from your machine while it's cutting. And number two, make sure you have a fire extinguisher by your machine.